Hello my loves, welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to talk about composite again. And today's planet is Uranus. I was kind of wondering if I should do Uranus overlay in synastry or Uranus in a composite. And I decided for the composite. Uh, without further ado, let's look at what Uranus is. Uranus is the liberator. Uranus is the principle of surprise. And uh, most of the time, it is the principle of unpleasant surprise at first glance. Something is happening and we are like, what the actual is that? Why is this happening now? And it is very inconvenient. And that is uh, often an understatement. <laughs> If it's inconvenient, then that's actually an easier manifestation of Uranus happening. And more often than not, it is really just like a tornado coming through and you didn't expect that tornado. And then now it's coming through and it's there and it's there and it's coming closer and it is tearing down the roof above your head. And now what are you going to do? What is the lesson? Because as you know, there's always a lesson. And when we take this analogy, or when we take Uranus and place it in a composite chart, we look at the area of the relationship that needs to be more free, that needs to be allowed to take its natural course. Interfering in this area is never a good idea. Interfering with the area that Uranus falls in is basically, you know, really messing it up. You need to learn in the relationship, in this area, to allow each other more freedom, whatever that means, right? You are going to find out what that means for you in your relationship. But there needs to be a level of liberation, understanding that we do it differently here. Right? It doesn't necessarily always mean that, you know, you know, you, you, you both live separate lives in this area. You, you know, you, you know, your partner can do whatever they want in this area. No, that's not what it means. This, this can also mean that we do things in a different way than the norm, because that's also what Uranus represents, right? Like doing things outside the norm, outside the mainstream. Not like normal people do it, right? In the consensus reality. We are doing things outside the consensus reality in this area of the relationship. Now, let's go through the houses and see how we can apply this, right? How uh, Uranus uh, applies or can manifest, right? Because there's there are multiple ways to manifest uh, in any area. And I can't go through obviously every manifestation because I obviously also don't know every single manifestation because I don't know your life. Uh, but I'm giving you an overview here, right? I'm giving you an overview of how this can unfold in, I have some hair here somewhere. <laughs> how this can unfold in your life, in your relationship. So Uranus in the composite first house, this is a relationship that needs freedom. And again, you define what that means, right? This could mean you live in separate houses. This could also mean you, um, you know, approach life from the perspective of, yes, we have a relationship and there are certain parameters that we set for this relationship, but Really, we live our own life. It is, it, it, this is a tricky one, um, I think, in relationships because the first house is the direction of the relationship, right? And when Uranus comes in, that direction, again, depending on how this manifests, can um, be like this instead of this. This can also mean, though, that we have a very unusual approach to life in this relationship, right? We want something outside the norm. We don't want to live the nine to five, like F that. We don't want that, no. We want to live completely um, different. 
And I've seen this in charts, in, in different um, uh, composite charts, working beautifully. This Uranus, oh my God, it can unfold in a really beautiful way where you really just don't live in the consensus reality. Um, you have a different way of living, you know, and it can work beautifully. It, it, it can be a very difficult one, specifically when with everything with Uranus. If we try to be and live in the consensus reality, meaning, you know, the way we're supposed to live, you know, we have a nine to five job, more or less, you know, it can be eight to four or whatever, but there is like structures, right? You go to an office or you, you know, you have to be present uh, for a certain amount of time every day to do your job for someone that you do for someone, right? Um, and you have children, they go to school that, you know, if in most of society lives that way, right? Um, that's the consensus. With, with this uh, first house placement in particular, we will not, uh, we might not want to live like that. Or the problem is when two people come together, right? Two people come together and they have this placement, but one of them is very much at home in the consensus reality. <sighs> this relationship will be challenged deeply. Now, Uranus in the second house, uh, this can manifest in the way where we acquire um, gain, financial gain, physical, monetary gain in unusual ways, right? In this relationship. This can also be us um, having unusual values in the relationship, contrary to the norm, right? Normal values would be, again, I, I, let's keep it simple, the nine to five job, um, you know, your ch children go to school, the, the, just the normal life. With this placement, Uranus is saying, mm -mm. no, let's, uh, let's have different values. Live, let's live a freer existence. Again, this can unfold in different, in different ways. Um, and usually any Uranus placement in the second house has to do with money in some shape or form, right? Finances will play a role in some shape or form here. And um, again, if we have a couple come together where one person or both, usually it's one person, but it can be both. If they find it difficult to look at the values at the finances from outside the box, then, you know, we, we, we will have a lot of work to do here. Then Uranus will just be very, very, we felt very, very harshly. This can also mean, Uranus here can also mean that um, the financial side is very unstable, right? Um, our financial position, the way we gain money, the way we make money is very unstable. This could purely be due to uh, both partners are, um, they're both not in a nine to five job. They, they work for themselves, right? They, they are entrepreneurs and, you know, some months are better than others. Um, and another thing that is along those lines is that um, these people are acquiring money in a new way. In a, in a way that is not known to most people. Like this is not new anymore <laughs> right now, but Ethereum or like all these Bitcoin um, ways of making money. This is, a, this is a beautiful manifestation of Uranus in, in, in this area, right? Making money, not like the fiat money, but a different kind of money. Um, yeah, now Uranus in the third house, is usually, mm, I don't want to say, I don't want to really say it's not so difficult. It generally is not as difficult as it can unfold in other houses. It can certainly have its own difficulties, right? But it often unfolds in a way where uh, we really influence each other's ways of thinking and change them. We are freeing each other's mind, so to speak. And um, yes, of course, this can be felt harshly and this can be difficult, 
but it's generally not as difficult as you know um, other manifestations in other areas of life. Um, what the one thing I would say here though, uh, the caveat here could be where we really get the other person or each other to do our inner work, our inner child work, because the third house also relates to early life conditioning, the way we've been programmed, right, in our childhood, what we're supposed to believe, what we're supposed to believe is right. I've, I've, I'm very familiar with this aspect, very, very familiar. Um, and everything I just said actually applied to my experience. Um, and I wasn't even thinking about that while I, when I was saying it to you. But yeah, um, you can influence each other in that way. You know, anything you've learned, like even like your school life, right? The, the, your, your immediate surrounding, that's what the third house is, house is right? Your, your city, um, the, the ways people have grown up in your city might be different to the way uh, the partner has been brought up. And now you're both coming together and you're like, wait a minute, what is right and what is wrong? Is there a right or wrong? What, what, what is right for us in this relationship? How do we want to grow? What do we believe as a couple? Right? Of course, we still have like individually our beliefs, but when we bring it together as the couple, what is true for us? And yes, also this reflects again what's happening in the ninth house, but we will, we will get there when we talk in the ninth house, when we talk about the ninth house. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, th this can be a very enlightening placement. Now, um, here it is in the fourth, rather difficult again, more difficult than the third, I would say, purely from the perspective of we, we are in the home now, we are in the personal area, we are in the space of privacy of the relationship, what others don't see, right? We're at home. Uranus at home, Uranus also he brings chaos, right? Because it wants to free us through the chaos, right? When we think of revolution, right? Uranus is uh, the symbol of revolution when we look at it from the astrolog astrological perspective. Uh, Uranus was discovered during um, uh, the, the French Revolution or during the time of the French and American Revolution. Um, so it is the symbol of revolution. Now it brings chaos and chaos in the personal life, in the area where we want to just relax, lean back and chill, oof, can be difficult. But uh, the way it, it can unfold here is um, two different concepts of how to um, have a family, right? Also, a very, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be two different ways. It can also be us deciding that we want to do family differently. This can sometimes be um, a couple that comes in with children from other, from previous marriages or previous relationships. Um, and then we have the patchwork family here. This can be that as well. Um, Uranus in the fifth, this is the area of children, right? Uranus in the fifth house area of children, but also the area of creative self-expression. Now, this again, it can unfold a little similar to what happens in the fourth house where we have uh, previous, previous uh, children uh, from other partnerships, other marriages. This can uh, show up here, can also show up that we want to raise our children completely differently than the norm. Maybe homeschooling, right? They don't go to school, they're going to be homeschooled. Or um, we're going to travel with them, right? We're not going to be in one place. We um, travel with them. Uh, this can also relate to um, an op more open relationship because the fifth house is um, the house of romance and there sometimes this is true for the seventh house too by the way sometimes there's a third party in the mix um if you know what i mean um, and we I either learn to be open to that or we we're not and this is uh, a reason for uh, separation in the relationship and this can, this can be true, Uranus can be a separator, right? It's not a separator like Saturn is a separator, but it can separate, right? Revolution, when we revolutionize uh, something, we, there's a change and change can come with separation. So this can be um, a reason, if we are not able to open our minds in this area to whatever is presented to us, if we can't go with the flow in this area, 
specifically in the, in, the, in the fifth house because it's the house of pleasure where we really need to flow, right? In pleasure, when you, if you can't like have structure and pleasure, then it's not pleasure. Pleasure needs flow, right? There needs to be a flow. Um, yeah, if we, we cannot find this for uh, this relationship, then it's got to be difficult. It's got to be difficult to, to keep the relationship uh, going. Now, Uranus in the sixth house is a Uranus, uh, again, more tricky because we are dealing with responsibilities, duty, right? The house of service, duty, where we, where we are responsible. Now, this can uh, um, manifest and unfold in a way where we uh, carry out our responsibilities in a very unusual way. And we, we are okay with it. We find an unusual way of doing this. This can be challenging because in the, in the house of responsibility, day-to-day -day routine, Uranus comes in and says, well, no, I don't like it. I don't like this routine. I don't like this routine. I don't want to do it. This is my responsibility. No. Uranus has a very rebellious nature. Again, revolution, symbol of revolution. Um, and we have to find a way of making Uranus work in this area because we want to make the relationship work. So where do we have to give each other more freedom? Hey, this could be a very unusual coming together um, where we, in the relationship, um, change the classic way of doing things. You know, if, let's say if we have a couple come together here and we have our chores. Now, the usual feminine chores, I don't want to call them the feminine chores because, no, no, let, let's, let's scrap that because there are no feminine chores. chores. Um, let, let's, let's say the chores that are usually contributed to the woman are going to be carried out by the man or vice versa. Right? This could be a manifestation of uh, making it work in this area, you know, allowing the freedom in this area. And again, because this is also the house of health, this is a really important. I every every time we talk about the sixth house, I want to make sure we understand that if we don't allow whatever this placement is asking us to allow, we can manifest uh, physical, emotional, and uh, mental illnesses that then show us the way, that then show us where we're not free in this area. We need to free up. We need to be more open. It, 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 it is a difficult placement uh, for, for any planet to be in. But yeah, specifically a rebellious planet, uh, like uh, Uranus coming into a house that is very earthy. Right? It's, a, it's, it's a very structured place, the, the sixth house. And Uranus is not a fan of structures. Um, Uranus in the seventh house, in the relationship chart. Well, um, in the relationship chart, the seventh house is generally looked as not as uh, where we relate within the relationship, but how the relationship relates to others. So here, that's where the third party can, can come in again, right? Where we have to possibly deal with the third party. Not saying this manifests like that in every in every seventh house composite Uranus, right? No, but this is a potential manifestation where we have a third party um, play a role um, where we see, can we be open to that? Do we want to be open to that? Can we allow this relationship to be open to that? Um, there's an unusual way of uh, relating to others. Um, when, it, when we look at it from the perspective of marriage, uh, seventh house representing marriage, um, there is a lot of instability. There's constant changes within the marriage, constant changes. Um, traditionally, from a traditional perspective, when we look at it from the traditional com traditional composite perspective, there is not really a tradition to composite, I know, but um, the way a lot of astrologers look at this is that this can be a very short-lived marriage because of the constant changes. They, that the stability is not really there. And, and, and marriage needs stability. There needs to be a level of stability in it. Um, so they, it is a quite a difficult place. And again, um, I think I said this before, maybe not in this video, but in other composite videos or in other um, synastry videos where the first house, the fourth house, the seventh house and the 10th house are um, the, I call it the axis of stability, right? Where we 
It's, it's part of the foundation. And if, if you have Uranus in either part of the foundation, can make the foundation very shaky and difficult to hold. Now, let's say you also have Saturn here. Saturn can bring in more stability, but you will still have to deal with Uranus one way or the other, right? Now, Uranus in the eighth house. Now, this one can have two, not just two, but there are two main ways of manifestation or two main things that you will have to deal with in that relationship and they can then manifest in different ways. So one thing is the constant, maybe not constant, I take this back, the, um, the changes, the deeper changes, the deeper transformation that will have to occur from time to time in this relationship to make it work, right? Because the eighth house is where we do the shadow work, where we go down the rabbit hole and we clean house. And we will have to do this more here with this placement because Uranus is requiring that, right? Uranus is requiring us to um, constantly look at the relationship and look at what is not working, what, where are we not free? What is, you know, what is holding us back? What is keeping us too tight? Where do we need to be more open? So Uranus it will not constantly ask us to do this, but very often. We will go through many phases where this is just like, you know, we might have a little bit of stability, but then we just feel very unstable again because we are trying to free up space or whatever we are trying to free up. We're free, we're, there's, there needs to be freedom within the relationship, right? And there's gonna, there's always another level. There's always another level. So this is um, another like tricky one, but the eighth house placements are generally not easy placements in relationships because we do the deeper work there. Then the other, um, the other area you will have to look at is resources, right? Resources like in the second house, uh, there will be an instability here uh, in, in some shape or form where maybe one partner um, sometimes can't bring in any resources, right? Or um, there's a lot coming in at once and then it's all taken away. So there's a lot of instability in resources here as well. Um, it can, again, this can be alleviated to other placements, of course, in, in one shape or form, but we will still have to deal with resources one way or the other um, in, a, in an unusual way where things will be unusual, not the norm. Uranus in the ninth, um, it's, uh, there is a bit of a mirroring when it comes to the ninth house placement uh, and the, the, the third house placement, um, where we have to be more open to other ideas, right? We are taking the third house understanding of Uranus in the composite chart to the to next level. Um, here we are, we have to be open to other cultures in a, in a very different way, other religions. We're, we'll, we might be challenged here in a big way through, uh, um, through this year or by this year placement or like, or this year placement is showing us that, uh, well, we are not as, as open as we thought we are to other religions, to other cultures. And, you know, maybe we are, we are married, we married into a different religion that is very foreign to us. And now within this relationship, slowly this unfolds and we, we, we constantly have to deal with challenges, that the challenges that um, come with that new way of living in this religion, in this culture. So you will have to open your horizon to that in, in, a, way, in a way that is challenging, not as challenging as obviously, you know, the eighth house or even seventh house, sixth house placement, but they're still, it's still challenging because you have to open your horizon, you have to um, open your belief system to new beliefs, different beliefs, different ways of doing things. Now, uh, Uranus in the 10th composite chart is a Uranus that is making things, um, it, it like, because it is, reflecting the fourth house to a certain degree. In, in this area, we um, might have a different approach to the classic relationship, the traditional relationship, right? Maybe here, the woman is the breadwinner and the husband stays at home. This could be a manifestation. 
the woman is the successful person and the husband is, you know, taking care of the children. Only one way of looking at it, right? It doesn't have to be that way. Um, but there's also a, a different way of um, working. Yeah, we, we are working in a very unusual way. This could be um, a couple that they are digital, digital nomads and they are um, working from wherever they are. So they, the, the way we work is very different. They also, um, maybe we, our work is a very unusual work. It's not the classic office job. Um, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, these people are coaches and um, their way of doing things is, you know, they are all online. You know, Uranus is also related to the internet, the online world. Um, so maybe that, that could be a manifestation of, of, of this relationship where the couple um, works very differently. They work online, they, they travel a lot, they, they work from wherever they want to. Um, and uh, yeah, also, again, this is a reflection of the fourth house to a certain degree where the family life will probably then, of course, also be very different. And, you know, if we, if we travel a lot and work from wherever we want, um, our family life will be, I don't want to say unstable, but it will be different, right? It will, will have a different uh, framework. Now, Uranus in the composite 11th house. So in the 11th house, the couple often has a different ideal of the relationship. You know, most couples marry for love, right? But, um, or, you know, resources, possibly. Uh, but in this area, we can come together for intellectual stimulation. Uh, we focus on different things. Um, our, we have different ideals to the norm. The, the way, this is also a, a relationship that is, uh, again, structured differently where we maybe don't live a classic, in the classic way where we, you know, share a house. Maybe we both have our separate homes and then we just come together whenever we come together. There is a humanitarian um, idea here as well as the couple, you know, maybe this, this can be a couple where um, the humanitarian cause is one of our thriving forces in the relationship. Um, generally not the most difficult placement. Uranus feels very at home in this area. So this is generally, an, you know, we both find it very easy to do, even if it's very unusual and unconventional. We as the couple generally don't find it as hard. Now Uranus in the 12th house is a, a rather difficult fella because um, we're dealing with the unconscious here and we're dealing with the part that is generally not really lived in, in the relationship because the relationship lives in quote unquote reality, right? We live in the physical world and when we come to the 12th house, we leave the physical world. So this is the part of the relationship where we both um, touch each other in a way that can sometimes be really, really frustrating. And we trigger each other and we don't really know what we are actually triggering, where we are actually triggering. We just, um, we, we can bring up frustration in each other in a way that we both don't fully understand. We don't really fully understand why we we are angry now or frustrated. What is actually triggered? Because we're dealing with deeply, deeply unconscious um, um, areas within ourselves, the self that we bring into the relationship. Uranus affects our spiritual life, right? Um, the way we approach spirituality. There can be big triggers here because maybe one person is not that open to uh, living the spiritual path out in the open and the other one is um so i think this can unfold in the way where um we we have to learn to give each other freedom in this area where we either both go along and live out our spirituality in a very unusual way meaning again 
a different type of lifestyle. This is another placement where we probably are better off living a, a different type of lifestyle. The, the nine to five is going to be very challenged in this placement as well. Um, like where I always say this with the 12th house, every 12th house placement is asking us to um, look at different ways of living, different ways of doing things. And because we are touching the unconscious here, often it, we're not really sure why we are actually doing it. We feel the need to do it. And again, as with every Uranus placement, you, you, you got to allow yourself freedom, right? You've got to open up in this area. So um, opening up to a more spiritual path, a more unusual way of doing things. Um, this is also a placement that will open your horizon in a, in a, in a way that you didn't expect. The question again is what are we learning here as individuals and as the relationship? What are we learning through the challenge here? What through the triggering, through the triggers that we encounter? Now, if you have any questions about any of the placements that I've talked about, any of the 12 houses, please feel free to comment below. If you're interested in a reading, a composite reading, synastry reading, any relationship chart reading, uh, you can click on the link in the description box and book it. And other than that, uh, I wish you a beautiful day and I will see you later.